vlog. Welcome to Monday morning and it's my fifth week. Fifth week as a PhD student, third vlog, and I'm back in the office after being ill all of last week. Those who watched the end of the last vlog will know that I cut last the last vlog short because I got ill. I have been ill since then, up until about today, and I'm just about back to 100%, but not quite. I didn't get much work done last week. I got some work done. I worked from home all of last week. I've not been in the office at all since a week past Friday. Aside from being ill, uh, I had several issues with my work, which meant um, a lot of asking for help. I had some issues with my code, and in trying to test solutions to that, I did also crash one of the university's computers. I crashed one of the servers running too many things at too high thread count. But essentially my problem was I was running stuff and finding values in my plots that were four times the values I was otherwise calculating. And we could not figure out for the life of us what this was. This took a long time with a lot of troubleshooting across the entire group until somebody figured out that there's a bug in the tools we were using to do analysis. And if you increase the number of threads, what it did was do the same calculation on multiple threads and add them all together at the end which explained why running on four threads gave me a maximum value four times what it should be. And why running on eight threads gave me a maximum value eight times what it should be. It's the stupidest bug. Today is Monday, which means if you've been watching these last few vlogs, you'll know that today I have lab demonstration in 20 minutes. And then oddly, I have a supervisor meeting this afternoon. Normally they're Fridays and they've been Fridays the other times that I've had these vlogs. But my supervisor was also away last week, so I was out of the office because I was ill. She was out of the office because she was away, and she's also away the end of this week. So we're having a meeting today, and then we'll figure out what we're doing for next week. So this is kind of making up for last week's meeting. Aside from that, I'm going to be trying to read some more papers as per usual, and I'm trying to make the vlog more targeted this week. This week's topic, what the hell is a PhD? Why am I doing it? What does it look like? And we'll get to that. So fast forward through the rest of the day, I, I'd i never vlog much on Mondays to be honest, right? Because with the demonstrating in the morning and then being in the office in the afternoon with office mates, I, I don't know, I've not asked them about filming like to camera in the office. I feel like it's a bit of a, a bit of an ask. Like, it's understandable if people are doing teleconference, like um, Zoom meetings and such in the office, that's understandable. They don't really have anywhere else to do it, but I don't really feel like saying, hey, do you mind if I record this for a YouTube video for like two minutes? Today has been both like really good and really unproductive at the same time. So I've got things running on the university computer at the minute. And to be honest, it's a bit of a mixed bag. Um, I've discovered why I overloaded the server. So the computer that I've been using is called Herschel. It's only got eight cores and eight threads and it's CPU. And it's only got uh, a, a relatively small amount of RAM for a machine like this. So I think I've overloaded the RAM and the CPU, and I think that's the problem. I kind of also may have also overloaded the RAM today, if not the CPU. Anyway, I'm gonna stop using that computer and start using a different one with more CPU cores and more RAM, because I think that's my problem. I think I'm using too much RAM with my code. I had my supervisor meeting, which was really interesting. Fortunately, she's also a completely flummoxed as to why I have why there's this error in the code about changing the number of threads, increasing the values. But we have established that that is the problem, running on a single thread, which is not ideal, but it does work. We had a bit of a discussion about what I'm gonna do next, which involves trying to have a look at how, trying to find some satellite galaxies in the simulation data we've got. Because the way that these simulations work, it's not like I set up a satellite galaxy and I set up a main galaxy. It doesn't really work like that. The way these simulations work is you evolve the dark matter and then you pick that as a starting point and run it with gas and everything and it just evolves physically. You don't always have like predictable satellites. So the next job is figure out how to find. The other thing that I have been doing the last few days is writing an abstract for a conference that's in Vienna in February that hopefully I'm going to get to go to. So I sent my supervisor the first draft of the abstract, she sent a few comments back. So working on a second draft, I'm going to send her that in a couple of days time. Um, we can discuss it at my meeting next week. Now I need to get to editing mode and edit the previous episode of this vlog series. So this is episode two that I'm editing at the minute. I know what I need to put in, I just need to go and find all the music and any graphics and stuff and just put it in. Morning folks, welcome to Tuesday and I'm working from home today. 
and we're going to do a study stream. Today I have managed to get into the computer that uh, that I broke, well I didn't break, I overloaded yesterday, figured out what the problem is, I'm using a different computer now and I've freed up that other machine for other people to use. Pretty good morning so far. I'm feeling very awake and I have a stream to start. And say hello to the vlog people. If you want to say hi to the vlog, now is your time. <laughs> Chaotic River has the hello camera, very well, that, nice one. That's tech also saying hi to the vlog. Cool. I'll get on with the stream and actually doing some work. Sorry about the slightly crappy audio from earlier. Things should be better now. It's now two o'clock and I'm about to get back onto streaming properly. We put basically a really long session on that Pomodoro session in the study stream for kind of one and a half worth of, uh, yeah, one and a half Pomos. So uh, I could like go and make lunch and then attend the chart group meeting. Chart being combined astrophysics, instrumentation, and possibly? Gravitational waves? I don't know if gravitational waves falls under chart. It was interesting-ish. There was a couple of observers giving talks today and I'm not really that big on observing because I'm not an observer, I'm a simulations person. So they talk about a lot of stuff that I don't necessarily know that much about. I'm gonna find out a lot of stuff about simulation side and then about observations. I'm not gonna focus a lot of my time on observations papers at the minute. So I don't like intuitively know like, oh, that's that bit, that's that bit, that's that bit that is important to me. I do like working from home. What I don't like at the minute is the fact the clocks have changed. The clocks changed on Sunday night, well, Saturday night into Sunday. And I don't like how dark it gets so early. Like I'm looking out the window and we're getting to golden hour at two o'clock in the afternoon. And I'm like, I don't think I like this. I mean, I, I love it from the idea of having golden hour in the afternoon. So I could go out with the camera at the weekend and take some really nice photos. I mean, this is quite a nice glow, but I, I don't like the idea of it being dark so early. It was dark when I was coming back last night at like half past five. I'm actually getting to the end of the work day for me, at least from the PhD point of view. I'm in the last few minutes of the final Pomodoro session I'm doing on stream. I feel like I've done a lot of work today, even though it's not like five o'clock yet. I feel like I've got more work done than I would have done in the office, for example. But one thing I wanted to talk about today, and I'll touch a bit more on this throughout the vlog, is what actually is a PhD. I talk about doing a few different things, but it doesn't really explain what the whole thing is or what the point is. I guess the most smart arse answer I can give you is still correct. It's a postgraduate degree. So postgraduate being a degree you do after your undergraduate degree. So everyone doing a PhD has a bachelor's degree or a master's degree or something similar. Point is, it's a research degree. You're not sitting in classes every day for three to four years. What you're doing instead is research and learning how to become an independent researcher. Right now, I'm getting a lot of direction from my supervisor as to what I should be looking at and how things should happen over the course of my PhD for the next wee while. Over time, I'll become less dependent on my supervisor for that direction and I should become more independent, able to decide what my research question is, how I'm gonna do go about doing that and less reliant on other people to tell me, is my answer correct? Just before I finish up for tonight, I thought I'd show you the uh, the pumpkins that we carved for Halloween. So mine is the slightly messed up with the upper lip, demonic looking one, and my partner's being a wonderfully cute little cat one. No, it's not dinner. I, I haven't been that terrible vlogging. It is still the morning. I'm in the office today, and when I go into the office, I'm trying to reduce the amount of carbs that I'm having. So what I'm doing at the minute is like a sort of salt and pepper chicken stir fry type thing. <sighs> Drop that into him. Nearly put it over like four or four because of I really need to find somewhere in the department to film that isn't my office. Since it's Wednesday, we had the Astro Seminar. So seminar is essentially, I guess, lecture for everyone in the sort of research part of the Astro group. So today it was a guy called Peter Coles from Maynooth University in Ireland. And he was talking about open access publishing in academia, specifically in astrophysics. So when we talk about open access publishing in academia, and in this case in astrophysics, we mean that the papers that are published are accessible for free by anyone. So the idea being that you don't have to pay to read a paper written by me when I eventually publish one. This sounds great. 
The problem is that the default position in academia is that you publish in scientific journals and those journals then charge somebody so you can read it. The standard for a very long time was what was called subscriptions. Um, basically your university library would subscribe to all the journals that the academics in that university would likely need and then you just log in with your institutional login and you can access everything. Open access has come along largely because of the public interest in it. And the idea being that anyone who is who is funded by the taxpayer, like the, the research they produce should be accessible to anyone. Essentially the only thing that differentiates a journal from just publishing on archive is the peer review process. Is that someone else in the astronomy community has checked your work. That is the only thing and that's why it is insane that you'd spend two and a half grand to publish with another journal because almost all of that is going to profit. So, so the journal's costs are hosting the PDF, you've got a copy editor who will like put it into the house style, which a lot of the time can screw it up, and then you've got a few of you maybe some like other sort of admin staff you have to pay, but the actual cost to process a paper is minuscule compared to the two and a half grand they charge you. Anyway, I will probably make a whole video about publishing in academia. I might actually see if I can interview that guy who was giving the talk today because oh, the whole system sucks because you don't get paid as the, as the author. The author does not get paid. The people who do the peer reviewing, the people who actually do the whole value add that journals supposedly give, they don't get paid either. The journals are just raking in the money. It's insane. Now I need to make dinner because I'm streaming tonight and I'd like to do a little bit of work on my next video. Which will hopefully be out by the time this vlog comes out. Morning folks, Thursday morning and I am back on Twitch today actually doing a, doing a Pomodoro stream while I work from home. I actually slept in this morning but it's fine. Um, I actually think I'll still get a massive amount of work done compared to yesterday because geez yesterday got taken up by so many things. But yeah, I'm back in the office. I'm about to get started on a load of work today. So I think what I'm going to try and do is fix some of the various types of renders that I'm trying to do from this data and see if I can start plotting a couple things side by side to start exploring the effects of them. Um, so yeah, that's kind of my plan for today. I'm still satellite hunting in uh, in my data, but yeah, that, that's all good. But I did promise you yesterday that I would talk more about the whole like, PhD thing. Like, what is it? What is the whole process? And I touched on Tuesday, I think, about, um, about the fact that doing a PhD is meant to turn you from like where you are at the end of an undergraduate degree to be an independent researcher. And I didn't really explain what that looks like. The point of being an independent researcher is that you don't need to be told by somebody else what research you should be doing, which, you know, that seems fairly obvious, but that's a process. It's not so much you can go from, right, so in your master's project, you're told you're doing this and you do a little bit of stuff of your own volition to, right, now do your PhD, uh, yeah, have fun. Basically, you have a supervisor and your supervisor is kind of responsible in part for that journey from dependent to independent researcher. And that looks like a whole load of things. I mean, for one thing, it looks like supervision meetings a lot, but it also involves like building up an intuition of how the science works. Like if you see something that you don't understand, at the start of the PhD, you don't really know what's causing something you don't understand. Like what could be the culprit? How, what, what avenues to go down to research? By the end of the PhD, the intention is that you can look at something and think, you know, I have a pretty good idea of how I would at least tackle trying to solve this research question. And that's really the essence of it. And that looks like a whole lot of things. It looks like supervisory meetings. It looks like a hell of a lot of hard work. It looks like presentations and making mistakes and going to conferences and trying to become a better researcher every day. I've actually left the house. We've got another vlogging section outside. Just, uh, you know, apologies for the traffic noise. Hopefully it's not too bad. I have the microphone on the camera, so uh, we'll see. This afternoon was really good, actually. I had this, the stream was actually really good today. In fact, I've been having that sort of experience most of this week. Um, I feel like having the regular streaming slots with my study streams and doing longer study streams rather than just like a few hours with 25 minute Pomodoro sessions. Actually going to 50 has been really good. Now I'm in the city centre though, I got the bus into town, uh, but it doesn't go all the way. It doesn't go all the way to the centre of student life, which is 
where the Student Union is based here. Um, it's a really nice new building. I've actually not spent really any time in it yet beyond picking up my ID card. But I'm playing a game of 40k there tonight, um, which will be good fun. Yeah, I've not played 40k in a better part of a decade. So I'm looking forward to relearning the game, though I know the rules have changed a lot. It's not really necessary. <laughs> Yeah, this is gonna end well, isn't it? Uh, you know what's really funny? Um, yeah, you know? <laughs> One more guy dead. Uh, he's very dead. Yeah. Yeah, this is this is definitely smart. Attacking an entire tank with, you know, Perfect. swords. Stop him from shooting. That's the only smart thing about this. Last man standing, this guy. Yeah. Last one in the, last one in the army, and he's, uh... Like, really proud of himself. He killed everything, apart from this lot. <laughs> so, I join you on Friday uh, at home, unusually. Normally I would go into work on a Friday, go, in, like, go into the office and do my work in there, but I don't know, I was exhausted this morning and just thought, you know, I'll have a wee bit more of a lie-in and... Do some work from home today. I'm having issues with uh, with my radio profiles of everything's coming out as either infinite or zero, neither of which are what I should be getting. So I I need to have a look at that because I'm trying to see how various properties vary over like or vary with radius. Like how do, how did they vary as you go out through a galaxy? Like I I need to figure that out, and I don't really know how I'm doing that yet. Um, but that's probably a job for this afternoon because at the minute I'm reading a paper on um on like stripping of gas from satellite galaxies. It's mostly looking at how it's happening with shocks, which isn't overly helpful, but I think it's referenced a few papers that will be useful to me. Well, I just had a really interesting email chain with the outreach officer for the School of Physics. So Cardiff's physics department is really, really into outreach and going out into schools and into, the, into showing science to the general public as well. Um, and there's been a whole thing about uh, going, but like trying to showcase to kids in schools what it's like being a researcher, what the journey looks like, especially if you went to schools that weren't great. So there's like a couple of schools that are looking for, like one school looking for somebody who's like a researcher um, to like talk about what a researcher does, how they got there, what their journey was, and then another one looking for somebody who's so basically looking for people to talk about their path post to GCSE. Part of what I want to do is with this channel and with going to these do this outreach stuff with schools, part of what I want to do is talk about getting into like stuff, getting into academia, doing a PhD from a, from going to a school where 30% of people leave with five hires, which is pretty much the standard for going to university. That's the point. That's what I want to be able to communicate is that this is for everybody and that just because your school's a bit crap doesn't mean you are. Anyway, it's really exciting. That'll be in like February, March time. This is like park it for now because I'm not really far enough into my PhD to start talking about being a researcher. I feel like, like not like this is what a researcher does. At the minute, what I do is piss around with code and read some papers. Um, so both of these discussions are gonna be like February time. So we're gonna nail down the details later, but oh, it's exciting. <laughs> Yeah, the other thing that I want to talk about today, um, so it's a wee bit further on, I've finished up doing my PhD work for today and therefore for the week, I'm going to move on to planning, a, like writing a script for another video. And I think it's something that I do need to, um, to touch on because the PhD, yes, it is a full-time job. It's also the sort of thing that can really wear you down, especially when you're having problems that you can't fix, especially if they're problems that no one else seems to know the answer to as well. Like I'm having coding issues left, right and centre that no one seems to know the answer to. Like I had one last week that was a nightmare and then this week I've been having them irritating ones that are like really easy things but when there's not documentation for the codes you're using, I digress. Anyway, work-life balance is a factor and I mean I try to keep this job to be like it's a job, I try to keep it to a nine to five um, or within a nine to five. And to be fair, I'm pretty good at that so far. And I feel like I get a reasonable amount done despite that. What I'm trying to do though, is that on the days when I'm finding the PhD work to be quite difficult, whether that's just I'm lacking motivation for it or it's just I'm hitting issue after issue after issue and I don't know a solution. 
what I'm trying to do is take some time away from it to do something like science communication. So do something productive, but something that's not the PhD. So trying to have a work-life balance is good. I try and sign off in the evenings and I go and do Scottish country dancing. Or like last night I was at Crits, the tabletop wargaming. So like that was really fun. It's the first time I played Warhammer in about a decade in terms of like a proper game. Morning folks, happy Saturday and you join me back in my home office because it is absolutely atrocious outside. I am writing the script for the Voyager video which really needs filmed slash recorded today. There's going to be a decent amount of camera but also a decent amount that's just voiceover. Um, yeah, I, I'm still working on the script. It's currently 4,000 words long which is a bit longer than I usually do. There's a good chunk needs to cut out of it, but also there's a decent chunk is uh, not written yet. This video is the first in my hopefully series on what I'm calling legendary missions. The missions that have been real landmarks for us as a species exploring space. So this is going to be everything from space probe missions like the Voyagers, but it will also include space telescopes like Hubble and Kepler and I don't know if we'll do JWST yet, it's a bit new, but you know what I mean. It's it's about these missions that were really important and we'll probably also talk about certain human spaceflight missions, about the spacecrafts themselves and about the missions and how they came about, but I'm trying to figure out how to balance that because I don't know, I feel like if I go into the full historical context of how Richard Nixon basically screwed up the Voyager program, I feel like people are going to get bored. Good morning, happy Sunday, and I finally got that script finished last night. So the script's written and I've gone through like how each bit's going to be, like is it going to be to camera, is it going to be like a voiceover, what am I going to do with it? So I thought of what I'd do is I'd set up my recording setup for filming and then, you know, give you a sort of tour of how I actually make the videos because, you know, I thought it'd be interesting to you guys. This is my home office. So it's a reasonable size room. Like it's it's certainly, it, it's designed as a double bedroom, right? And give you a quick tour of the office. Got a bookcase with not enough books, a poster, uh, like an academic poster for my master's project. And then we've got computer, desk set up, Ikea Kallax in the corner, my desk chair is currently shoved over there, over the side, sofa bed because it also acts as a spare room, and then what we've set up just now. So let's have a walk around. This is the main the main camera, well I say it's the main camera, it's the only camera we're using for this video. So this is a Canon 70D and the lens on it here is Tamron 24-70 f2.8 G2. I love this lens. This is great. It's a full frame lens, crop sensor camera, because I want to upgrade to a full frame camera at some point. Main light is this one. Probably blown out everything. It's a softbox. Uh, so this, this is my key light. We got this, which is a, a Logitech Electro Glow, um, which acts as a film light. And then this wonderfully overpowered for what it is we're doing, um, Roleno LED panel light that I'm using as a as a hair light for uh, for my main videos. When I'm streaming, th this light is the uh, is the key light. Apart from that, there's not much more to say. The lens is set up it's sitting at about 40 millimeters on the lens, which in real life is like 70, I think, because um, it's a crop sensor camera. But yeah, that's kind of where we're at for uh, for my recording setup. As far as audio goes, I have my Rode Video Micro um, microphone up on like on the vlog camera at the minute so that will get moved over there but i will also take this which is my audio technica at 2020 and it'll be positioned like just out of i i like my lav mic but i just feel like it doesn't give me quite enough bass um which is unfortunate i don't know i might record with it again because i don't know th this is great but i do feel like it's a little bit it's not the right microphone for the job. I want to get a shotgun microphone. So like uh, one that you can position out of shot, point at my mouth from a distance and it will still sound. Whereas this guy, he's really, it's really designed to be used at sort of this distance. And essentially what all of this amounts to, all of the key light, hair light, fill light, 
um, all that and the setup on the camera, what that amounts to is this. So yeah, audio is still coming off this guy, but uh, video off the main camera there. That, that's how this looks, that's how I set up my main angle for, um, for shooting my YouTube videos. Done, lunch had, time to record a video. This really needs done. This is the end of the week. I finally got that video recorded. Oh, it took so long. I have like two hours worth of footage for what is hopefully a 25 minute video. Oh. I should be less of a perfectionist, but to be fair, the fireworks were not helping. It is bonfire night and it's been a bit of a pain. I've put in a few clips of, you know, bonfire night fireworks. So thank you for bearing with me as I've tried to get this video written and recorded. Um, this is kind of what life has been like a little bit at the minute as I'm still trying to catch up from being ill. I'm glad it's finally written. I'm glad it's filmed. Now I just have a rather complicated edit to do on this one, but everything will be fine. The video will come out, but I am going to play some games and then go to bed because tomorrow morning, back at work, because it's Monday. Thank you all for watching. Like, comment, subscribe. You know all this stuff. I'll see you in the next one. See ya.